validating a base64 string and specifying allowed values are some of the new data annotations in .NET 8. Stay tuned as we'll also look at limiting the number of items in a list. Hit the subscribe button as we look at the new data annotations. So we've got an ASP.NET Core Web API project set up. If we go ahead, we want to create a new model and we're going to call it My Validation Model. Within that, we want to set some properties. So we're going to set a property of fruit and we're going to specify some allowed values for it. So in order to do that, we specify the allowed values attribute and we can specify what values we wish to include. So we can include banana and apple. Afterwards, we're going to go ahead and store all our favorite fruits into a list. So we're going to call it favorite fruits. It's a list of a string type. And we're going to specify the length of it. So how many um, items were allowed within the list. So we can specify the minimum length and the maximum length. We're going to have the minimum as one and the maximum as three. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a password. And we're going to ensure that the password is a base64 string. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, you wouldn't normally store a password as a base64 string. You're probably right, but this is just a demo. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and we're going to specify an age. So for that, we can specify the range between 10 and 19. Now, the range isn't actually a new attribute for .NET 8, but there are some new properties for it. We've got the minimum is exclusive, which is set to true or false, and we can also do the same for the maximum. So if either the minimum or the maximum is exclusive is set to true, it will essentially take out that from the range. So with the minimum is exclusive set to true, it will take out 10 from the range. So essentially in this instance, it will be 11 to 18. It won't include the minimum and the maximum within the range. We're also going to deny some values here. I'm going to deny not being able to add 15 and 16 to the age. With the validation model set up, let's go ahead and create the controller. So we go ahead and add a new controller, select API, API controller empty, and we're going to call it my validation controller. Within that, we're going to create a new endpoint, so return type of I action result. We're going to call it my validation and specify the my validation model as the attribute. I'm going to specify it with a HTTP post verb. I'm going to just return OK. Let's test the endpoint out now in Swagger. So if we try it out, we can see in the request body we've already got some default values. If we execute that now, we can see though that we're getting some model validation issues. So let's go ahead and address each one. So for the age, the field age must be between 10 and 19 exclusive. We can see the age is specified as 19, but because the maximum is exclusive, it's going to exclude 19 from the range. The next one is the fruit field does not equal any of the values specified in the allow values attribute. If we go back to the my validation model, we can see that we must specify either banana or apple as the fruit. We can see that we're just specifying that as string, so it's not going to work. Lastly, it's saying that the password field is not a valid base64 encoding. We can see the password is just set to string, so that's the reason why that's not working. Let's go ahead and fix these. So I'm going to specify the fruit as apple. Favorite fruits, we can specify between one and three of them. So we're going to specify banana and apple. Password, we're just going to copy a base64 encoded string and put it in there. Now the age, we're going to specify as 16. Now, if we run that now, we're still getting a model validation issue. And it's saying that the age field equals one of the values specified in the deny values attribute. If we have a look at the age property, we can see that the deny values are 15 and 16. So we can't include them in the values. So let's go ahead and change that to 13. And we can see that's now passing for us. There are many other data annotations that you can use in your .NET project for model validation. Watch our data annotations video next, where you'll learn to use the required and min length attributes.